In this video, we demonstrate how to perform the Engelgranger two-step co-integration analysis in Oxmetrics. We have a data set with Danish bond rates. We have R, which is the money market interest rate. We have B, which is the bond yield. And we have a sample of quarterly data from 71 first quarter to 2003 second quarter. Here is a plot of the two series. We will test for co-integration and we will assume here that we have already performed say an augmented Dickey Fuller test for a unit root and that we could not reject the unit root in both of these variables. So now we want to address if these two variables are co-integrated. First we will test for co-integration with a known co-integration vector which is given by the interest rate spread. So the co-integration parameters are 1 minus 1. To do that we simply create a new variable which is the spread which we define as r minus b. Then we create the first difference of the spread and we're ready to go. So we can plot the spread and it looks like this. So this could clearly be a stationary variable. We will perform the usual augmented Dickey Fuller test for a unit root in the spread. So we set up a model, use PZGIF, models for time series, single equation dynamic model. Here we just clear the model. So here I'm going to add five lags of ds like this and then we want the lag level like this. So this is the model we estimate by OLS. We select the sample here. The longest possible sample is from 74 third quarter and we run until the end of the sample. We click OK and we get the following output. Note that do not find autocorrelation in the estimated residuals, but there are some problems with misspecification. However, we will just continue and act as if this model was well specified. That means that we can do standard inference on these lagged first differences because that's coefficients to stationary variables, even if S is an I1 process. Note that a lot of these appear to be insignificant. Here I'm going to go directly to a model that only includes the third lagged difference like this and then the lag level. I'm going to estimate it OLS for the same sample as before and this is what we get. Diggy Fuller t-test of the hypothesis that pi is equal to zero where pi is the coefficient to the lag level. We get the t-value directly up here. This is minus 5.35 so that's the test statistics. The 5% critical value in the Dickey Fuller distribution with a constant is equal to minus 2.86. And note that here we have not estimated any co-integration parameters, so zero estimated co-integration parameters. So this corresponds to the usual Dickey Fuller distribution with a constant. We can reject the null of a unit root in the spread. And that is the same as saying that we reject no co-integration between the interest rates. So we actually find co-integration between these two. Now alternatively, instead of assuming that we know the co-integration parameters, we could estimate them. We simply do that by running a static regression. So this is a static regression, no lags, and just the regression of R on B. And then we have a constant included as well. Click OK, choose OLS. We select the same sample so that the results are compatible to what we got before. And this is the estimated model that we get. Now remember that we cannot do inference in this model. We can only use it to estimate the co-integration parameters. We get a co-integration parameter to, to B of 0 0.85. So this is not very far from 1. Now we want to save the estimated residuals. So we go to the test menu, store residuals in database, select residuals like this. And we simply give them a name. Here we just choose residuals like this. Then we use the algebra editor to create the first differences like this. So this is the first difference. This is now a new variable in the data set. Let's do a plot of the residuals like this. And you can see that it's pretty close to the spread that we got before. Now we want to perform a test for a unit root in the estimated residuals. We first specify a model and here we include again five lagged first differences and then we want the lagged level like 
this. And remember that the estimated residuals have a mean of zero, so we take out the constant term that was automatically added. We estimated by over less, and now the sample is a little shifted because we need to condition on the first observations from the regression we got before. Click OK, and this is the result that we get. Note that a number of these are insignificant, so we would probably remove them one by one. Here I'm going to just do it in one jump and go directly to a model that only includes the third lag of the first difference and then the lag level. Estimated for the same sample, and this is the model that we end with. And from this model we can directly get our Dicky Fuller t-test of the hypothesis that pi is equal to zero. And this is just given here as the t value to the coefficient on the lag level. So the test statistics here is minus 6.77. The 5% critical value in the Dicky Fuller distribution with a constant and one estimated co-integration parameter is equal to minus 3.34. So this implies that we again check the null of a unit root in the estimated residuals, which is the same thing that we reject the null of no co-integration. So again we find that these two variables are co-integrated. The last thing we want to do is estimate an ADL model. We will do it for each of the two variables and we will take the spread as the co-integration relation. So we go back to PCGIF, formulate, clear the model, and then we set up a model for the difference in R. We include again five lagged first differences and then we do the same with DB and then we want to include the creation relation with a lag so this is just S minus one. Click OK, choose OLS and now we will maintain the sample here. We click OK and this is the model that we get. We can do standard inference on the lagged first differences Note that a lot of these appear to be insignificant, so we're just going to go directly to our preferred model, go back to the formulate window, and we can end up with a model where we actually can remove all the lagged first differences of R, and all we're left with is dB, and then the spread with a lag, like this. Click OK, select the same sample as before, and this is what we get. And now we can use this error correction model to see if the variable r here is error correcting. So recall that s, our spread, the co-integration relation, was defined as r minus b, so that means that we have a beta coefficient to r of 1, so we must have an alpha coefficient, an adjustment coefficient that must be negative in order to have error correction. Here we have a coefficient of minus 0 0.4, so it has the right sign. Moreover, it has to be significant, we can do inference here, standard inference, because under co-integration is again coefficient to a stationary variable. And here we see that this is clearly significant. So the conclusion here is alpha r is negative and significant, so r is error correcting. Finally we can do the same for the bond yield, clear the model, we set up a model with 5 lags of dp, 5 lags of dr, and then we want s with one lag. So this is the error correction representation of an ADL66 model. We estimate it again like this and then we just remove in one go all the coefficients that appear to be insignificant. We end up with a model where we only need one lag first difference and we want to have dr and this is the model that we need. Same sample OLS and here we go, this is the model. So recall that S was R minus B, so we have a negative coefficient to the variable B. That implies that this alpha coefficient here, the coefficient to the co-integration relation, has to be positive. So here we get the wrong sign, and moreover if we look at the T value, it's insignificant. So this implies alpha B has the wrong sign, and is insignificant. B is not error correcting. So overall the conclusion here is that two variables, R and B, the money market interest rate and the bond yield, individually they are I1 processes, so they are unit root processes. But they are co-integrated, which means that there exists a linear combination of the two which is stationary. And that linear combination is given by the spread. And finally we find that it's the short rate that is error correcting, so whenever the system is out of equilibrium, it's the short rate that will adjust.
So that's all for now. Thanks for watching.